Today, we want to practice using trigonometric functions. We want to be able to use our calculator to find a trig ratio of an angle or to find an angle using a ratio. That's what we're going to use these most for because that's the use, that's a piece of information about the triangle. All right. If you take a look at each of our trigonometric functions, we've got sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. Each one of those equations has three parts, the angle and two of the sine. There's a theta, opposite, and hypotenuse, or theta, adjacent, and hypotenuse, or theta, opposite, and adjacent, paired with the trig function. But the trig function is telling us to do things. It's not one of the variables that we need to figure out. If I have an equation with three pieces, the game is I have to give you two of them and ask you for the third one. This is a two out of three game. I give you two of these three parts. Find the third part. Given two out of the three parts, find the third part. That's the math game at this point. Also notice that they're all set up as ratios. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. If you're wondering if I'm just going to keep reading these every time it comes up, the answer is yes, because a song doesn't get stuck in your head because you heard it once. A song gets stuck in your head because you heard it incessantly. So we have a two out of three game, and it's set up with a ratio. So I have to be able to give you an opposite and hypotenuse and ask you for the sine of the angle. I have to be able to give you an angle and the opposite and ask you for hypotenuse. Or the angle and the hypotenuse and ask you for the adjacent. I have to be able to add, get, take any two of those and ask you for the third one. And it's set up with multiplication. So we need to explore the relationship between multiplication and division. This is what I like to remember in terms of multiplication and division. 6 is equal to 2 times 3. That, that's not shocking. We all knew that, right? Right? There's two other pieces of information that are related to this that aren't really new information. It's the same information said a little bit differently. 3 is equal to 6 divided by 2 and two is equal to six divided by three. No revelations. This is just how these three things are related. This is how multiplication and division are related. This is why I care. There's a lot of things that are set up like this. If I drive at 50 miles an hour for eight hours, how far am I going? 400 miles. And what do we do with the two numbers that have? Multiply them. So we can ask related questions. If I need to drive 600 miles and I'm going to take an average speed of 70 miles per hour, uh, that's, that was me, uh, an average speed of 60 miles per hour, how long will it take? 10 hours. What did you do with the numbers? Divide them. We got to know which ones to multiply and which ones to divide, to divide. And the same thing is going to be happening here. This is all just variations of six is equal to two times three. So three is equal to six divided by two. Because the one we used before was distance is equal to rate times time. 
So I can solve this for rate and time. It's just a two out of three game again. If distance is equal to rate times time, that means rate is distance divided by time. Or time is distance divided by rate. If I drove 400 miles in five hours, I was averaging 80 miles per hour. Rate is distance divided by time. If you remember one of them, you get the other two by understanding how multiplication and division work. And if we just remember that rate is measured in miles per hour, and that per means divided by, we've got it. Rate is something we measured in miles per hour. Miles per hour is our rate. Miles is a distance. Hours is a time. Per means divided by. Per means divided by. Not divided by. I spelled by wrong. Per just means divided by. So miles per hour means miles divided by an hour. That'll help us remember some stuff. If we need to turn it around for one of the other ones, if three is six divided by two, then six is two times three. And also two is six divided by three. questions other ways of remembering things is the triangle method think about the think about the distance as the one on top so notice that the distance sees the rate and the time together so the distance put that at the top and distance sees rate and time next to each other So now if we shift our perspective to the rate, the rate looks over at the other two and sees the distance on top and the time on the bottom. The time will look over and see the distance over the rate. So we don't have to remember three different things. We just have to remember one thing. Any questions? So that's a visualization. Is everybody okay? I know math is started. Let's look at an example with numbers. Let's suppose that this side is five. Uh, this side down here has a length of 12. In terms of theta, what is the five? Opposite. And in terms of the theta, what is the 12? Jason. So if I wanted to know something about the angle theta, which trig function are we going to bring into play? Tangent, because we know opposite and adjacent. We could figure out hypotenuse, but I've got opposite and adjacent like right here without doing work. So 
let's use tangent. So our strategy is gonna be use tangent because we have opposite and adjacent. So we'll write tangent of theta, we don't know what the angle is, is opposite five over adjacent 12. But I don't want to know what the tangent of this angle is. I want to know what the angle itself is. So to find an angle, we need to use inverse trig functions. We use inverse trig functions to find angles. So this is what it's gonna look like. We're gonna take the tangent inverse of both sides. Since tangent inverse is the inverse of tangent, they cancel out. Just like if we had an equation where it said five times X, we would do the inverse of multiplying by five, we would divide by five. If our equation said X minus seven, we would do the inverse of minus seven and we would add seven to both sides, right? Right? Every time I do that, you get stronger agreement, whether it's true or not. And that's the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? Right, and everybody's like, oh yeah? There's like an inherent threat level that you get as a teacher. I don't even know why. I'm not like threatening. Like if this happened in a bar, actually I do the same strategy. If someone tries to pick a fight with me in a bar, it's like, all right, you're picking the fight. I get to choose the weapon integrals. You can start. Ask me an integral. No, but wait, what? My whole integrals at five pace, paces. Come on, punk, let's go. Because that's how it works. If you challenge someone, they get to choose like how you're going to do combat. And I always pick integration. I have not had to be in a fight for a very long time. I also don't go to bars anymore because I'm like old enough to like buy my own alcohol and bring it home and it's cheaper that way anyway. I mean, seriously. I mean, I could just like carry it around with me. I mean, I'm not carrying it around with me. So here's what it looks like. Here's what we're going to write down or type when I say show your calculations. We need to do the tangent inverse of five over 12. So theta will be tangent inverse. We write tangent with a negative one as a superscript, but we don't say to the negative one, we say tangent inverse because we're professionals. And then we put parentheses because we're professionals. And I wanna make sure I divide five by 12 before I do this tangent inverse business. When I say show your calculations, I want you to write down or type down what you're going to be punching onto your calculating machine. I don't, is it an American thing to say punching? Because it seems like excessively violent. What you're going to press on your calculating machine. So I want the tangent inverse of five twelves. So here's my inverse, or here's my tangent. And inverse tangent is above in blue. So I got to go second tangent inverse of five twelves. 22.6 degrees. I didn't specify where to round this because I'm just making stuff up. But. Let's just default to rounding to the nearest 10. Any questions? Apparently if you have an Android phone with their superior scientific calculator, you can just type second and an inverse five divided by 12. I think, does it open up parentheses for you? How oh, courteous, it even gives you parentheses. So nice. Let's see what we have to do with these iPhone calculators. First of all, activate portrait mode. Now remember, tangent inverse is, your default is sine, cosine, tangent. I need tangent inverse, so I need to press second. Get that going. 
And these buttons do the function of whatever is sitting on your screen at the time. So if I just type five divided by 12, it's gonna do the tangent inverse of 12 because the calculator is not listening to you. It just does what you, whatever is there. It's not like listening to you. It doesn't know what your intention is. So you have to hit equals. Now we're looking at five divided by 12. Now I can press tangent inverse. Look how many digits. I'm like, oh, I don't need those digits. I need you to read my intent. Yes. Hey, Siri, what's the tangent inverse of five twelves? Okay, I found this on the web for what's the tangent inverse of five stroke twelve. Check it out. Hey, Siri, so you're telling me that you don't know. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay, I kind of feel bad now, sorry. <laughs> Desmos, oh, that's right, Desmos. Um, thank you for reminding me. So Desmos normally is like a graphing app. And it's like, calm, calm, calm down. I don't know if it's gonna be that. I can't because I got the cheap target, the, the cheap camera. It's only gonna be using this for COVID and then, oh yeah, yeah. Chill phone. So, um, funks, tangent inverse, five twelves. Oh, it's in radians though. The wrench? Oh my God, they added that, okay. Oh, I need have to do it again. So make sure you're in degrees. I want my, our angles in degrees, there it is, 22.6 to a ridiculous degree of precision. Any questions? Is everybody okay? Everybody looks so happy. We've got to do one more and then we'll take a break. Oh, I can't call the opposite side A. That's just mean. Jeez. Are you kidding me? I'll call it X. X. Let's just call it X. There we go. So I've got this angle 32 degrees. What is X relative to that 32 degrees? Opposite. And what is the 15? Hypotenuse, doesn't matter, doesn't care where the 32 degrees is, it's opposite, the, third, the 15 is opposite the right angle, so this is the hypotenuse. What trig function should we think of? Sine, because we've got opposite and hypotenuse, so sine. Let's fill in what we know. Sine of 32 is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we want to know what X is, X is being divided by 15. So I'm just gonna multiply both sides by 15. Note that I'm not trying to figure out what the sine of 32 degrees is before I just write down 15 times the sine of 32, because I'm not gonna care what the sine of 32 degrees is. I only need what 15 times the sine of 32 is. And so on our text instruments calculators or Android, we're just gonna type 15 sine 32 close parentheses because we're not slobs and then hit enter. Cool. 
I didn't give any dimensions for this. It's just 15 something. So it's 7.9 of that same thing. Yeah. Inverse sine would be for finding an angle. No, we wouldn't want to use an inverse sign because that would be that that's what we would use if we were looking for an angle. But the angle that we're looking using is 32 degrees. We've already got an angle, so we're not going to use inverse sign. You know that thing? Only use inverse trig functions when you're looking for an angle. It, that makes it seem so like sketchy. Looking for an angle. Have you tried using inverse trig functions? Mm, that's a good idea. Okay. Let's take a break. Come back and do a brief activity. Eight minute timer. Yeah. 